Hey, I'm Kyle with Servo City, and today I'm going to talk about the servo blocks. The servo blocks come in kit form, and there's several aluminum pieces here, so I'm going to go through each one. First one is going to be a servo mount. We have servo blocks for a quarter scale servo as well as for a standard size servo. So you're going to drop the servo in and attach it with four screws, fasten that down, and then you're going to notice the four holes out to the side on this one. Um, it's going to align with the channel pattern if you ever want to run this on a piece of channel, but uh, in this case it's going to be used for the quad hub mounts that go on the side of the servo block assembly. So the quad hub mounts are one inch tall. They have the 770 Actobotics hole pattern around the, the center of it. Uh, there are four tap holes and four through holes. So if you want to attach this to channel, you can run screws into the tap holes. If you want to attach it to a, a part that has tap holes, you can run screws from the backside into those tap holes. There's plenty of clearance. Uh, that's why it's dished out on the backside and 125 thick instead of a full quarter inch. So we have the quad hub mounts and then the top of it is going to be a bearing mount. The bearing mount ties the two quad hub mounts together and it also holds the shaft that goes on the servo. So you've got a servo shaft that is broached. This part's made out of 7075 aluminum so it's really nice and strong and it's going to fit down on the servo spline and so as the servo rotates it rotates the shaft. The, uh, the bearing is going to hold the shaft in place and basically take out any side loading that gets, um, gets put on the shaft so it's not transferred into the servo. If you're looking at the servo blocks on our website the first thing you'll notice is there are actually six different styles available. Um, we have the standard size servo blocks and we have these in a hub shaft and a plane shaft version. So the plane shaft version just has a half inch shaft protruding out of the bearing so you can put a, a half inch clamping hub on that to fasten other Actobotics parts to. Or we have the hub shaft version. And the hub shaft version has the 770 bolt pattern already machined into the top. They're all tapped holes so you can fasten a piece of channel or whatever you want to the top of that. The other thing that's nice about the hub shaft version is it has a one inch OD. So if you want to use a one inch clamping hub around that and tighten the, down the pinch bolt and use the 1.5 inch hub pattern on the one inch clamping hub, you could do that. Now these two versions come in both a 24 and a 25 tooth spline. High tech typically uses a 24 tooth spline on, for example, a 485 or a 645 MG servo. If you go with the new brushless servo from High Tech or one of the new D-Series, it's going to be a 25 tooth spline. So make sure you get the right servo block to put your servo into. The other two styles of servo blocks are going to be the quarter scale servo blocks. Once again, we have those in the straight shaft version, just a half inch shaft protruding out of the top, or the hub shaft version, 770 hole pattern, one inch OD. Um, these are going to be for the quarter scale size servos, so like a HS785HB or a 755MG servo made by High Tech. Those are going to slide right in and bolt down. So why would you want to use a servo block? Well the biggest thing on a servo block is going to be the fact that it takes out any of the radial load that gets transferred into the servo. You've got a large half inch bearing out here that's supporting the shaft so you can put a large load on this shaft without worrying about uh, adding friction inside of the servo or having little tiny bearings or bushings taking that type of load. A servo has a tiny little output spline and it's really not intended to take a radial load so with the servo block you can load it up and it's going to be able to rotate it no problem. Uh, the other thing that's nice about it uh, is going to be mounting. So you've got tons of mounting positions. Um, this is 1.32 inch in overall width on the standard size. So you could just slide it right down in a piece of channel. You can use the 770 pattern on the side and run some screws in and bolt it in quickly. Um, and you can rotate it you know, any position you want inside of the channel. It's going to fit about any way. There are tons of different mounting options available, which we're going to get into in some of the assemblies. Um, you know, if, if you wanted to mount it straight on the top of a piece of channel, what I like doing is actually replacing the sides. So take out the quad hub mounts and then run, in, run one inch standoffs on it in place of those sides. And that allows you to run socket head screws down here through the servo mount to attach to your channel. Uh, now I put it on the top of this piece of channel. 
you could drop this assembly down in the inside of the piece of channel if you want to keep it nice and sleek and low profile. Another way to mount your servo block is to just put a clamping hub on the outside. So you can bolt it in from the inside of the servo block with some 632 socket head screws and uh, then just slide your tube in and then tighten down the pinch bolt. Uh, we have some tube clamps that are also a little bit longer uh, so if you want to add more structural stability to this tube you could run a tube clamp instead of a clamping hub. Um, you can lay this servo block over on a piece of channel if you just want it laying down flat and then use the 770 pattern on the outside. Another way you can do this for indexing um, and I, I do this quite often. You can put a hub spacer on the outside. So it's a little hard to tell on this, but I bolted a hub spacer on the, the very outside of this servo block. And then I put a one inch clamping hub on the side of the channel. So if you want to re-index this, you can just tight, or you can loosen the, um, the pinch bolt on the clamping hub. And you can rotate this around however you want when you get it in the right position, you just lock it back in place. Servo blocks get used in a lot of assemblies. They get pretty intricate. And uh, so we've just brought some in to show you different ways you can attach them. You know, if you want to build a, a multi-axis rotational assembly, you know, maybe for animatronics or something like that, then uh, you can bolt them together really easily. And on these, in order to, uh, to allow clearance for these to rotate around, I put a hub spacer, you know, in between the, the first one and the second one, and then also between the second and third. That way you have enough clearance for the thing to rotate around without your servos touching one another. Um, here's one with the standard size servos, and in this case I've used the straight shaft version. That way I can index it by using the pinch bolt. Um, and then I just put a little gripper on the outside. So this thing's a, a really solid assembly. You know, it's, it's not going to flex if you put a lot of weight on it or anything like that. It's just very, very solid. So there's a quick rundown on our servo blocks and why you would use them and different ways that you can attach them to Actobotics parts and to one another. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to email tech at servocity.com. And thank you for watching.